can tell you people they were the devil's children. Greetings from Castle Glory, from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. <laughs> Aurora is trying to kiss me and I'm trying to avoid her. She needs to get out of the habit of doing licky lickies on my neck. <laughs> well, today we have a lot of ground to cover, literally as well as figuratively, because we are speaking about the royal family and the accusations by Kerry Kennedy of structural racism. So we're covering both sides of the Atlantic from that point of view. We are also going to be going as far afield as Argentina. So without further ado, I will plunge right in right now. Because I'm afraid things are becoming very awkward and really rather unpleasant, in fact, nasty, to put it mildly, and dangerous. Sunshine says, and incidentally, I know who Sunshine is. Sunshine is an extremely eminent, extremely well-placed, and extremely well-connected individual. More than that, I will not say because obviously if sunshine wanted me to reveal his or her identity sunshine would not have used a nom de plume but i know who sunshine is this so it has come through privately as well as publicly for Harry and Meghan to be accepting an award for attacking the royal family for running a racist organization is surely an act of treason. I couldn't agree more. But to continue the question, all their titles must be removed and they must be removed permanently from the line of succession or the monarchy appears weak. How can they both possibly be awarded or indeed feel entitled to the same award as the president of Ukraine? This attack on the monarchy must be stopped before it does even more harm. Can Harry not be stripped of his war medals? I don't think it's easy to strip someone of his war medals. As for the rest, I think Harry and Meghan have colluded in what is actually treasonous behavior by allowing Kerry Kennedy to accuse the British royal family as an institution of structural racism. Now, structural racism means what the Americans had in the South under Jim Crow, with the Jim Crow laws. We have never had structural racism in this country. Indeed, for over a thousand years, we haven't had slavery in this country. Any slave who landed on British shores was automatically a free man or woman. If Harry and Meghan do not come out declaring that Kerry Kennedy has got the wrong end of the stick, she has made a mistake, and they were never accusing the British royal family of structural racism. Because if you remember in the Oprah interview, Meghan said when she was pregnant, <laughs> 
you know, remember with Archie, who loved diving between her knees to take a little break, that there were conversations, she said, conversations about how dark Archie's skin might be, as if that is anything racist or even unusual, because it is typical and indeed it would be indicative of a lack of racism to have a normal conversation. Only in a sick mind like Meghan Markle's could that become racist. And Harry, he said it was only one conversation and it was before they were married. So even there they don't agree, which means one of them or is lying or both of them are lying. Well, now is the opportunity for them to say that they never accused the British royal family of structural racism. And whether they accused one individual or not is something else again. But they never accused the family generally of being racist and they did not accuse the institution of structural racism. If they do not come out and say that, and as everybody knows, I have resisted having Harry's rank, style and titles removed from him forcibly. I think he has crossed a line and I think the time has come for him to be ignominiously stripped of every single title. Debbie says, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. questioned his sister's choice of Harry and Meghan and Kerry, and no wonder, I mean, it's a joke. And Kerry issued the following statement via an online interview. They, brackets Meghan and Harry, went to the oldest institution in UK history and told them what they were doing wrong, that they couldn't have structural racism within the institution, that they couldn't maintain a misunderstanding about mental health. I'm sorry for laughing, it's so bizarre and ridiculous. They knew that if they did this, here comes the victimhood in the pity fest, there would be consequences that they would be ostracized, they would leave their family, their position within the structure, and that people would blame them for it. They have done it anyway because they believe they couldn't live with themselves if they didn't question the authority. I think they have been heroic in taking this step. Then the question continues right out of the mouth of Markle and the Oprah interview. That said, Markle appears to be peddling those lies to Americans, and Oprah's boy, Tyler Perry, has become Meghan's biggest cheerleader. Well, should I tell you something? I think I'm going to completely skip anything about uh, the Oprah interview now, and Perry, Tyler Perry is of absolutely no consequence and therefore it doesn't even merit our attention in something as serious as this. And I'm going to read the other question in conjunction with this and answer them both. Hi Lady C, I wonder if you are as outraged as I am over the following statement by Kerry Kennedy. Read the unwarranted award going to Harry and Meghan. J.J. Cam then reads, uh, writes the exact quote that I just quoted above and ends with, talk about drinking the Kool-Aid, never mind the award. Why do these people still have their titles? Would you have any inside information as to whether or not these proceedings have influenced the House of Lords to ban Harry from acting as a councillor in future? Would love to hear your thoughts on this matter. Well, I can tell you 
there is grave disquiet that Harry and Meghan are stoking racist fires untruthfully, unfairly, nastily, destructively, and reprehensibly for their own financial gain. Because that's what this is all about. Money. Controversy converting into money via column inches. So it's all about attention and money. Well, you know, Kerry Kennedy is totally out of order. But then I have to tell you, the Kennedys, and I happened to know Jackie Onassis, and I happened to like Jackie Onassis, and I happened to have a degree of respect for JFK and RFK. But let us not forget that at a time that the IRA was bombing people in this country and killing innocents. I knew one or two innocents who died, Philip Geddes, the William Hickey columnist. He was killed in the Harrods bombing by the RIA. Uh, sorry, the IRA. You know, Teddy Kennedy supported the IRA. He supported a terrorist organization bombing the citizens of one of America's main allies. What does that tell you? Of course, the Kennedys have traded very heavily on being Irish. But let's not gloss over the fact that they were perfectly prepared for political gain to support terrorist activity against the British people. So if you put it in that context, you begin to see why Kerry Kennedy has no compunction about trashing the British monarchy as an racist institution, notwithstanding the fact that the British monarchy allowed Meghan Markle to marry Harry. Kerry Kennedy, would you like to show me one of your mixed race relations? Because I've run across quite a few Kennedys in my time. And my sister-in-law even had a step out with your Uncle Jack. I don't recall any women or men of color being a part of that equation. It seems to me if anybody's racist, it's the Kennedys. And also, let's remember, Meghan Markle doesn't do black. So maybe there's a more of a link between the Kennedys and Meghan Markle then is so far apparent because clearly none of you is interested in uh, associating in a carnal manner with people of colour. No, you're not. However, the very family that allowed the marriage proving that they could not be color prejudiced is being accused by you, Kerry Kennedy, at the behest of Meghan Markle, that frowsy, pushy hustler, a, a picture of dishonesty and artifice. And you are pushing her agenda of 
racism. Let's not forget also that Kerry Kennedy's sister, Rory, is Liz Garbus's partner and Liz Garbus is in charge of the Netflix show. Their love story, everybody loves the love story. Everybody's just fascinated and just dying to see Harry and my love story where bigger and better than Romeo and Juliet, Abelard and Eloise. What's the other one? Ratatat. Oh. Ratatat. Oh dear. What are they called? Not Mutt and Jeff. Do you remember? Bonnie and Clyde. I think the time has come for the royal family to make an announcement confirming that they are not structurally racist and that any suggestion to the contrary is not only denied but will hereafter be dealt with through the courts. Of course, they're not going to do that. They might make the announcement, but they're not going to I think the time has come for the royal family to make an announcement to the effect that they are not racist, that any suggestion to the contrary is malicious. Unfortunately, they are not really in a position to sue. Because first of all, Harry and Meghan have been clever, so it's not against an individual, it's just against the whole institution, even though they made it absolutely clear in Oprah that it was only one individual. So do you see what a wide net they're casting and how vicious and mischievous they are? The difficulty for the family in suing would be first of all, if an institution sues, it's not the same as a person. And secondly, if the person who Harry and Meghan should ever name sued, you can depend on it. They would have all sorts of liars and cheats crawling out of the woodwork to defend them. I mean, the viciousness, the maliciousness, the evil is beyond belief. It is a totally reprehensible and disgraceful slur. The reality is that anybody who opposes Megan or criticizes Megan or doesn't oblige Megan and allow Megan to do what she wants which where the royal family was concerned was prostituting their name their institution and their identity so that she could make herself a shed load of money she accuses anybody who at all opposes her of racism. The woman is a proven liar. She is a proven cheat. She is a thief as well because she has stolen the good name of the British royal family by accusing them of being racist. And we now have Kerry Kennedy. I mean, Kerry Kennedy, who is she to talk? Andrew Cuomo? Mm. Let us remember what the Sussex Survivors Club called Megan, a narcissistic sociopath. And I have to say, 
of what is happening now and what I know from the West Indian diplomats and the disastrous effect Meghan Markle's lies about the royal family being racist have had upon the relations of various Commonwealth nations with the royal family itself. She is both a narcissist and a sociopath. The woman plainly has no scruples, no conscience, and is a sanctimonious hypocrite who couches herself in faux principles as she fakes her way through life. I think she is a total disgrace. Christelle says, Lady C, I am sure you must have read the declaration Kerry Kennedy made that there is structural racism in the royal family, all based on the hearsay slander statement Meghan made and ignoring the contradictory statement Harry made against his own wife minutes later in the same interview to the same interviewer, namely Oprah, that's my interjection. And she is declaring it as though it is gospel. Well, of course she is. Kerry Kennedy is no better than Meghan Markle. Her actions should prove it. She has no sense of responsibility. It's all about grabbing attention and making her awards noteworthy and getting people talking. Kerry Kennedy has now said the president that any slander without proof is true and is to be believed. Well then, should we believe every little shenanigan report on her own family, starting with her grandfather and how he made his millions? This incidentally, I'm reading out because I think it's a brilliant comment. Well, everybody knows Joe Kennedy made his money by being a criminal. He was a bootlegger and he was a totally dishonest businessman. Should we not prefix the assault claims against her ex-husband with allegedly any more? Ah, oh, yes, Andrew Cuomo, mm, who had to resign as being governor of New York because he was interfering with all sorts of women. Allegedly, you say? They said as well. He was too touchy-feely and too insistent on using the lead in his pencil to write upon the pages of women who didn't want his pencil on their page. Should we not use allegedly when we discuss her bullying claims and being called a monster by her staff claims? Well, I don't know whether you are referring to that Kerry Kennedy has been accused of bullying or Meghan. So I don't know which one you're referring to because you've so I'm going to leave that without making a comment on it. Because you then say her father's alleged involvement in Monroe's demise. You're absolutely right. Bobby Kennedy went and saw Marilyn Monroe the afternoon of her death. And after he left, her nurse, even though she had taken barbiturates already, gave her a barbiturate enemy. The autopsy report shows that the overdose was absorbed rectally. It was not absorbed through the stomach. Read the autopsy report. 
and there was a suspicion that the Kennedys reached the nurse because Marilyn Monroe was endangering the political position of the Kennedys. Now, my sister-in-law, Jeannie Campbell, had been married to Norman Mailer, who wrote a book about this and caused a huge hue and cry. I think it was in the early 70s. I think it was, or the mid-70s. It was sort of around the time I was married. And obviously, I heard lots of things also through various people who associated with the Kennedys socially. And yes, the Kennedys were suspected of having killed Marilyn Monroe to silence her, that she didn't commit suicide, that she was dispatched. Whether that is true or not, I have no means of knowing. However, going off the criminality of her, Bobby and Joe and uh, Jack's father, who even bought the election for Jack, which was actually properly won by Richard Nixon, gratis Sam Giancana and the Chicago mob. I think it is safe to say that no Kennedy has any entitlement to set themselves up as a Petronius arbiter, especially where legality and morality are concerned. Then I continue the question. Her uncle Ted, who was deemed a coward as there have been some concrete reportings on how he ran away and did nothing to save the drowning girl for fear of his reputation? That's the question. And my interjection is Mary Jo Kopechny. Teddy Kennedy, disgustingly, disgracefully and ignominiously, left her in the car to drown while he fled the scene, went into the hotel and pretended as if nothing had happened and as if she wasn't in the car. Disgraceful. And Teddy Kennedy, incidentally, then did a lot of very good work. So he went some way towards rectifying his omission, saving uh, his reputation, if not his soul. She says, don't we use allegedly here? No, I use allegedly. Everybody knows that Teddy Kennedy left her to die. No allegedly about it. He left her to die. Of course, it was covered up because the Kennedys had power. Or, question continues, or her cousin Will Smith, who was accused of rape, should he be considered guilty even though he was acquitted because this is our truth? Was her uncle the president so noble for having brought mistresses into the White House like a revolving door, including allegedly a young one? Has any Kennedy clan member ever dated a or married a black person? No! 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 Their touchy-feely doesn't extend beyond paying lip service to mixing. And if I may continue the question, and God knows how many skeletons we do not know about in their respective closets. Well, I know of a one or two, let me tell you something that you don't know about and they're corkers. I am so disgusted now with the Kennedys. I used to keep them in high regard, albeit with a grain of salt, but now I feel they should lose their Camelot status 
and America's royalty status. They lost that years ago, my dear. And are they not Irish, which could possibly mean she is also using Harry and Meghan to attack the British? Very good point. The Kennedys have traditionally been a very pro-Irish. JFK was pro-British as well, but JFK was a sophisticate. Some of the other Kennedys, even though they've had money, especially Robert Kennedy's children, because let's remember Kerry Kennedy's first cousin maternally. I think his name is Michael Skakel, was convicted of murder. So, the Kennedys, <laughs> getting the picture? I think so. Are Americans now systematically attacking the British based on unproven slanders by Meghan? No, not all Americans, just prejudiced Americans and opportunistic Americans like Kerry Kennedy. No, sorry, is it fair to hit the whole Kennedy clan because of one misguided member? No, this is her question. And I agree, it's not fair to hit the whole Kennedy clan. No, but that is exactly what she did to the royal family. That's exactly right. According to Meghan and Harry, it was one person. Yet now that's converted into structural racism, notwithstanding all the evidence to the contrary. Otherwise, Meghan Markle, supposedly 43% Nigerian. <laughs> Aurora, catch that flying pig while we're at it. Wouldn't have been let into the family. And she's right. She is doing to the British royal family what we will not do to the Kennedy family. Because some of them do sterling work, others don't, but some do. And some, such as her uncle Teddy, who incidentally <laughs> to add a note of levity, Spent half the night at the Diamond Ball in 1968 at the plaza trying to pick me up. <laughs> Happily married man. Mm. I had to bolt downstairs and go to the, I think it was called the Persian Room, where John Davidson was singing. And the maitre d' who knew me because I used to go there quite a lot with friends, gave me a table and champagne until the show was over and then I went back upstairs and managed to dodge Teddy Kennedy's bullet. Anyway, to return to the more serious matter. She has also set a dangerous precedent that we can take it for face value, the slanders anyone makes about anybody as the truth, and moreover attack them for it public, in, publicly in front of the whole world. Those who live in glass houses should not throw stones. No, and the Kennedys live in a rather larger glass house than anybody else. Because I don't recall any member of the British royal family ever lobotomizing a member of the family, no matter how badly behaved they were, or how uncontrollable they were. Yet her grandfather, Joe, lobotomized her aunt, Rosemary, and destroyed her life, because thereafter she had the capacity of a of a very young child. But you know, Kerry Kennedy's got what she wanted, attention for the awards. I suspect she also has another motive. 
I have been told that the tickets have not been moving quite as well as she would have liked. So there's a monetary incentive as well. The tickets go from $2,500 for a single ticket to a million dollars via 50,000, 100,000. I don't remember if it's 150,000 as well, but it's 250,000, 500,000 and a million. A million dollars gets you four people on the top table. And I have to tell you, this is must be the largest top table that has ever been known to humanity because the half a million and the quarter million dollar uh, tickets also get you four and two seats on the top table. The million gets you two tables as well and your name in the program, you're listed as a patron, you're, you're given a shout out, you're uh, photographed, you're, they pan, you, pan your presence on the television, etc. So this is crass and vulgar commercializing. This is distasteful merchandising to raise money for an award that is given to these two jokers i think you've got the pair, the, the point francesca rose says lady c harry's wife being nominated for a humanitarian award because she fought against racism, is slander against the royal family. This award means awards to genuine people who fought against real racism. That is Nella, Martin Luther King and others. Harry's evil wife has lit the touch paper of racism between the races. She is hugely divisive, not uniting. What can we do about this as I am appalled that someone who creates havoc, chaos, heartache and grief wherever she goes can be chosen for an award of this type? I think you ought to write to the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Award condemning the choice and condemning Kerry Kennedy's inflammatory, incendiary and untrue accusations against the royal family. I think you can also write to the king demanding that the royal family deny these accusations and write to parliament demanding that Meghan and Harry be made to withdraw their comments and condemn Kerry Kennedy's comment or be stripped of all of their titles. They are not fit to represent the British people and the British royal family. The British royal family represents the people of this country. I have finally been shoved by Harry and Meghan and their deceit, their deceptions, their chicanery, their gross merchandising, their falsity, and their cohorts, including Kerry Kennedy, into saying, I think they need to be stripped of their titles. He is not fit to represent this country, nor is she. Those accusations need to be withdrawn or they need to suffer the consequences of their actions. Now we come to Meghan's pure malice. 
Julia says, in the Oprah interview, Meghan says that she told Harry that she was feeling suicidal on the morning of the 16th, January 2016. And Julia, I have to tell you, has done some wonderful detective work. And this nails Meghan for the totally dishonest, unscrupulous, vicious liar that she is. If she thinks I'm defaming her, sue me. Let me resume. That she was feeling suicidal on the morning of the 16th January 2016. Well, it doesn't matter whether it was morning or afternoon, whenever it was. She says that evening they went to the Royal Albert Hall to see Cirque du Soleil. And despite them doing their jobs and grinning, he was gripping her hand so hard the knuckles were white. I can't see it in the photos. No, in fact, there is no evidence in the photos, whether the stills or the reels of any of her claims, including that she was crying when the lights were out. No. Anyway, let me continue. She says that she told Harry that she did not want to go, but could not be left alone as it was not safe to leave her. If you look at the photos and videos on Getty Images, there is not the slightest clue she was feeling suicidal. I couldn't agree more. Now people can disguise their real feelings. And I have known two people whose partners killed themselves and they said they were normal to the end. So I'm not reading too much into that. But there is so much more to this story and contradictory evidence. Here goes. Contrary to her telling Harry in the morning that she could not be left alone, he was, quote unquote, quietly carrying out a private engagement at their home in Kensington Palace, end of quotes. He attended a workshop about mental fitness in the Ministry of Defence. You can read about it in an article in Hello magazine called This is what Her Prince Harry did while Meghan Markle was cuddling puppies yesterday. The article says that Harry launched the partnership between the Ministry of Defence and the Royal Foundation in October. The aim is to improve education and training around mental health for armed forces personnel, end of quotes. So far from cradling her at home in the morning when she allegedly told him, he was attending a workshop with mental health experts in their own home, several exclamation marks. She then went out in the afternoon to visit the Mayhew Animal Home. This is one of the places she did her agile, knees closed squatting to see the cute dogs. That's right, when she was about eight months pregnant and Archie popped, made a loud popping sound when she rose in her stilettos from her crouching position, bounced up with an alacrity that Nadia Comaneci did not display in all her years of stunning the world with her gymnastic skills. Also, I think the Mayhew Animal Centre is where Megan was very generous because remember, she's a great humanitarian and she supports charities, was giving them, I think it was 10 pounds a month. Oh, my God, so generous. Oh, Aurora, how can Matty cope with that. £10 a month? Talk about generous. Anyway, to continue, this is one of the places she did her agile, knees closed squatting to see the cute dogs. Not only was she happy and smiley, she had gone out without Harry. This event was at 2pm and then in the evening they went to see Cirque du Soleil. 
So her version, she told Harry she was suicidal in the morning and he just cradled her. In the evening, she had to go up because she couldn't be left alone. Real version. He was busy with mental health professionals in her home in the morning. Then she went on to a solo engagement and had to be dragged to the evening event. It would be great if this could be shared with anyone who claims she was suicidal because the world does not deserve her lies. No, the world does not. And thank you very much for your research. It's nice to be able to fix this pathological, vicious liar with fact. You know, Megan didn't go to HR at the palace for help. She went to lay a paper trail of nobody was helping her. She also went because the bullying allegations were being investigated and she and Harry weren't able to wish them away. So she needed a counterbalancing accusation. Also, it was a handy tool with which to manipulate Harry. Oh, H, I'm gonna commit suicide. I never read the newspapers or anything anybody says about me, but I know it's all awful and terrible. I don't think I can cope. I can't. I can't. I can't. Please, 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 rescue me, H. Rescue me from my torment. Please, H. Rescue me. Oh, 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 Megs. Yes, 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 yes. As long as I can have one of those BJs that you love, that you so love to give me. Yes. God, I mean, farcicality to the nth degree. David Souls says, and I have to thank everybody for their contribution because this is really sterling stuff. David Saul says, thank you, my lady, for talking about this evil pair. And I couldn't agree more. I think evil is the appropriate word. Who used the grave condition of considering suicide as a political marketing tool. Over the last 30 years, I, as a psychiatrist, have helped many in that state these clowns seem to take genuine suffering of others and dare to use it for gain. This is extraordinarily evil. I can imagine them having a vigorous workout in the gym while parked in a handicapped parking space. Dr. Souls, evil is the right word to use. And I'm going to use some of the many synonyms for evil, all of which, sadly, because Harry and Meghan's conduct is feeding hatred and racial divisiveness and the destruction of a great and ancient institution which is here to preserve us, the British people, from the encroachments of destructive politicians and overweening power. That's what the monarchy is here to do, protect us against people who are ambitious for too much political power, like the Kennedys and Meghan Markle and clearly now Harry. A few synonyms, destructive, all of which apply to Meghan and Harry. Destructive, vicious, hateful, nefarious, loathsome, malicious, maleficent, malignant, corrupt, depraved, disastrous, repulsive, repellent, stinking. I think we can stop there. And again, I'll say, Harry and Meghan, if you think what I have said 
It's untrue. Sue me. Sue me. I will see you in court. Sue me. Because your conduct is so disgraceful. It, it's, it is beyond the comprehension of any healthy person's imagination. And Sybil Francis says, as a clinical psychology professor for decades, clinical depression, which does often lead to suicide, has some telltale clinical features. Here are just some. One, personal grooming and personal bodily care drop to near zero. Patients do not shower, bathe, brush teeth, comb hair, change out of dirty food stained clothing, although these conditions of low personal bodily maintenance can be caused by other mental illnesses. These criteria should always point to evaluation of the patient for clinical depression and suicidal ideation as part of their assessment. Do we have any evidence that Megan ceased self-care didn't shower or bathe, didn't comb her hair. Are there any photos of her disheveled and massively unkempt? Well, calculatedly so, but not otherwise. You know, the tendrils. I'm Medusa. I'm Medusa and I've got to have my tendrils. But that's, she thinks that's style. But it's certainly not Depressive on Kent. I think we all know the answer, don't we? And one doesn't need a PhD in any field to use their own eyes. Sybil Francis, PhD, Professor of Clinical Psychology since 1979. Thank you very much for that, Sybil. Francis. Kerry Croft Heisinger says, Ah, oh, Jean. And she told a detailed story about sh how she and Sophie Trudeau sat by the pool and chatted like schoolgirls. Megalia can sure make up a lot of wordy, detailed stories, just like the chicken taco lunch with Miss Shell that never happened. <laughs> Well, if Sophie and Megan's interview were, if it had been recorded in two separate studios, it is quite likely that that sweet scene by the pool was as genuine as Megan's claim to have had lunch with Michelle Obama and Michelle Obama said they had never had lunch. I know who I believe. I love being a girl, says 3931. I totally agree. I've known people who contemplated suicide including myself as well. No one who genuinely wanted to kill themselves could speak about it so calmly on TV to Oprah, not even if it happened 20 years ago. She couldn't, couldn't even get her one tear left eye go routine going well enough to squeeze out a crocodile tear as she talked about it. Fake. Yes. Very distressing things. In my experience, no matter how much time elapses, remain distressing. You never, ever revisit anguish without experiencing some of the pain, maybe less intensely, but you don't, well, 
How do you know Oprah? I, I mean, I just, uh, I just have these thoughts, you know, that it's just so unbearable. I mean, so contrived, emotionless. Her statements to Oprah were totally emotionless. You cannot be emotionless when you are speaking about extremely moving things. You know, there are some things that aren't fakeable. And that is one of them. Observation from Mark Stevens. And this, of course, has nothing whatsoever to do with what we were speaking about. This is about racing. It is about racing. A broken in and well schooled mare is always the best ride, especially for an immature jockey. Or a very enthusiastic jockey who doesn't have much finesse. Gabriel Schiavo says, Hi Lady C, I have a question about William and Kate's children. Did their surname change going from Wales to from Cambridge to Wales? Thank you for your videos. I look forward to them every day and get disappointed when I remember it's an off day. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, the children are now Prince George of Wales, Prince Charlotte of Wales, Prince Louis of Wales. As you climb up the ranks, if you are royal, and it really is only the heir to the throne that changes with and, and when they change their title, their children change their title as well. Because William has gone and it it has it's happened previously. For instance, George V, he was the Duke of York, then he became the Duke of Cornwall, then he became the Prince of Wales. And every time he changed, his children changed with him. If, for instance, uh, I'll use the Bedford Dukedom as an example. Andrew and Louise were the present Duke. When they got married, he was Lord Howland and she became Lady Howland. Their children were the Honourable. Then when their grandfather died and the, his grandfather, I should say, died, Ian Bedford, and Robin, his father, became Duke of Bedford, he moved up and became the Marquis of Tavistock. At that point, his son became Lord Howland and his daughter became Lady Alexandra Russell. Then his father died and he became the Duke of Bedford. His son became Marquis of Tavistock, but his daughter remained Lady Alexandra Russell. So the surname doesn't change with the children in the aristocracy as somebody moves up the carriage, but the surname changes with, if you're royal, in a manner of speaking, because it's not really the surname, it's, it's the style of the place name that becomes a substitute surname. So I hope that answers the question, because 
Uh, LK Reiki says, Lady C, please answer my question about the Earl of Wessex. It is rumoured now that he will not be named the Duke of Edinburgh after all. King Charles has the right to do as he wishes, but I believe withholding <coughs> sorry, the dukedom from Edward would be extremely unpopular and could damage him as king. What do you hear about this matter? I want to be really careful because this is an extremely sensitive subject. And I hasten to add, I have not spoken to anybody about this, so nobody can draw a conclusion that these are anything but my thoughts. I am not being a messenger for Prince Edward or the King or anybody else. Okay, let me make that absolutely clear. First of all, the mirror is the paper that broke the news. The mirror is pro-Republican, anti-royalist. They are trying to drag me into court on the false pretenses and having lied about me so they can have a go at the British royal family and the British establishment. That's what they are about. They broke the story. Now, how credible is it that a story as sensitive as this would be leaked by the palace <laughs> to the mirror. I mean, here we are now in Harry and Meghan time. You know, yet another unbelievable load of cod's wallop being passed off as if it is something sincere and genuine. That's the first thing. The second thing is, when Prince Edward married Sophie, there was an agreement struck that he would ultimately get his father's dukedom. This was an agreement that was announced in the name of the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh and the then Prince of Wales. So the King put his name to that announcement. It is a precept of commitment and honour that you honour your commitments, even if they cease to be convenient. That's what giving your word means. However, the matter is rather more intricate than might on the face of it strike one because Louise Windsor and James Severn, against all expectations, when she was born over 18 years ago, she was called Lady Louise Windsor instead of Princess Louise of Wessex. Now, Prince Edward has been an assiduous member of the Way Forward, Way Ahead, I think it's called, if I remember correctly, Way Ahead Committee. He has been very involved all along. So I don't want to say more than that it is a situation that is best left 
alone for the moment. Also, there is no rush for the king to make his brother the Duke of Edinburgh. He can do it down the line. Also, his brother might ask him to forego the agreement. I don't want to say more than all of that. Oh, I'm purposely being opaque and I'm purposely making it absolutely clear that I have, I am not acting as a messenger for either Prince Edward or the King. I'm not giving out any information except my thoughts on this matter, which I think I have given out in such a way <laughs> that, as you can see, I'm being very careful what I say and how I say it, because the mirror is clearly trying to create a controversy where there does not need to be one, and I am not colluding with them. I leave that up to Harry and Meghan. And we end with Evita Peron. Heidi Robart says, Evita Peron introduced free milk to every baby born in Argentina to eliminate child malnutrition. She certainly did. She did a lot of humanitarian work for the poor. She certainly did, especially in the early days. This was due to her poverty and suffering in childhood. I couldn't agree more. She didn't have to pretend to eat $5 salads. She would have been grateful for such luxury. Absolutely correct. I think she is very much maligned in many circles because of her political beliefs. I hesitate to agree. I don't know how true this is, but I have been told that at a charity gala when things were not going too well, she embarrassed the wives of the oligarchs into taking off their jewellery and donating it. That is actually not quite what happened, but it's almost what happened. She had a massive chip on her shoulder about the oligarchy and she forced the women to give their to give up their jewels some of which were family heirlooms she never gave up any of her jewels but she made sure she got them to give up their jewels failing which there would have been consequences for them that is abuse of power she had her good side she certainly did a lot for the descamisados, the shirtless ones. They revered her, and to this day they do. But you know, to this day in Jamaica, lots of poor people think Michael Manley was a hero. <laughs> and I'm sure there are lots of people who think that Meghan and Harry are wonderful as well. She certainly got a taste for power, and she's the position certainly went to her head and she ended up demanding that she run with President Juan Perón as his deputy so she would be the vice president of Argentina and the only thing that spared Argentina from having her as the vice president was that she got cancer and the army also. In fact, I think I actually should withdraw that statement because the army made it absolutely clear to Peron that there was no way they would accept her as vice president. So even if she had been healthy, I don't think she would have been vice president but it shows the ambition she possessed. She wanted to not just be first lady of Argentina, she wanted to be the vice president. So she wanted actual power, 
even though she already possessed notional and in some terms real power. Geraldine Gibson says, true what you are saying about Ava Perron. She did some good, but was a truly dangerous woman. She certainly was. Her name lives in infamy in Argentina. How do I know this? I lived for 25 years in Argentina. I'm sure if you wrote a book about Ava, it would be excellent. I might, I might. It's an interesting story. Tar H says, in 2006, I happened to be visiting the cemetery where Evita was entombed on her birthday. Suddenly, a whole lot of women came in singing with flowers and presents. They celebrated her birthday as though she is alive, very genuine. Her mausoleum was put 13 feet below street level in case someone attempted to bomb it, as it has become a shrine. Even the stray cats living there stopped to watch. Well, I should think, because they were fascinated by the activity. And she does have very faithful followers. And she did do a certain amount of good for the Descamisados. She also did a tremendous amount of harm and damage. C.C. West says, Lady C, you have hit the nail on the head with your description of Ava Perón, with the cultish ways of Peronism, from an Argentinian follower who admires you a lot and is also tired of hearing the sugarcane-coated and false story of this woman. Well, she did untold damage to Argentina, and she did untold damage, far more than he did. She was extremely radical, and she was really a fanatic. And I will end on an anecdote about Evita Perón, which is actually true. When she was on her European tour and she was in one of the state landows with the Admiral of the Fleet of Italy, the people, as they were driving through the streets, were screaming, Puta! Puta! which I think, as we all know, means a lady of the night. Five letter word, beginning with W and ending with O, O-R-E. So they're screaming out, puta, puta. And to cover her embarrassment, she says, Admiral, I have no idea why they're calling me that. And he, quick as a flash, says, Do not worry, Signor. I have not been to the sea for 25 years, and they still call me Admiral. <laughs> and I think on that note, I can say, Thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and remember, keep the questions and comments coming in. This cannot be done without you. God bless and goodbye.